Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this review uh, for the new Pariah uh, Psychic Awakening book. Uh, so from the start I just mentioned GamingFigures.com uh, you can check them out for Discount 40k uh, other gaming systems available from them uh, as well. So you can check them out, be a link for them in the video description below. So uh, it'll be like a, a Tactica type review so we'll, we'll go through the whole book uh, and then we'll be talking a bit about tactics and uh, good options to choose from there's units here, wall of traits and so on uh, for us to cover. I'm not going to break this one up into parts, there's not too much content to this one here uh, so I reckon I can put this all into one uh, video for you. So just uh, flick through first of all so the focus here mostly Inquisition type stuff, uh, we'll look at the new Sisters uh, and Necron models in just a moment. Beyond the Veil, Battle of the Gates, fighting against the Necrons. Again, Sisters of Battle involved into the tomb. I guess this is all linking in nicely to the 9th edition trailer, Sisters of Battle versus Necrons, uh, and that's the uh, content that we've got here for Pariah. So it all coincides quite nicely, quite deliberately, no doubt. Uh, so then you get some missions to play, and there's the Ultramarines, so yeah, it's all been planned out here by Games Workshop. So I'll, I'll not cover the missions here, but uh, I'll just flick through them. So you've got breakouts, so just uh, missions to match in uh, with the storyline as you're reading it through. Uh, layer by layer, the next one, Extraction. It's quite good fun deployment on that one. I think they're still lining up a 6x4 table here, size-wise. Uh, so index for the Inquisition. So what I reckon I'll do is cover Lord Inquisitor, uh, Kariah, Draxus, and then the others I think I've covered before for, uh, in a review already. So limitless authority, data sheets, warlord traits, we'll cover those. Uh, there is the Telephysia discipline, uh, some relics and some stratagems to cover as well. And then abilities, the following abilities are common to many Inquisition units, so quarry. Units of the Ordo Malleus, Ordo Hereticus, Ordo Xenos, Ordo Minoris, keyword gain the respective ability below. So Ordo Malleus, when resolving an attack made by a model in this unit against a Chaos or Demon unit, you can reroll the hit roll and you can reroll the wound roll. So that's, that's exceptionally good actually, really good. Uh, Ordo Hereticus, when resolving an attack made by a model in this unit against a Chaos or Psyche unit, you can reroll the hit roll and the wound roll. So just Psyche keywords, so maybe fighting against Eldar for example, uh, you can use that one. Ordo Xenos, resolve an attack made by a model in this unit against a unit that is not Chaos, Imperium or Unaligned, you can reroll the hit roll and the wound roll. And then Ordo Minoris, resolve an attack made by a model in this unit against a character unit, you can reroll the hit roll and the wound roll. So good, good abilities here, very good indeed. And then you've got Authority of the Inquisition, Infantry units, this ability can embark aboard an Imperium transport model, even if that model normally only permits models with other faction keywords to do so, it's like a Rhino for example, uh, from like a Space Marine chapter. All other restrictions apply normally, and Inquisitor Terminator models can only embark aboard transports that specifically allow Terminator models 
to do so. If your army is battle forged, then the following rules apply. No more than one Inquisitor unit can be included in any Inquisition detachment. That is, detachment includes only Inquisition units. You can include one agent of the Imperium unit in each Imperium excluding fallen patrol, battalion, brigade detachments from your army without those units taking up slots in those detachments. The inclusion of any agent of the Imperium unit does not prevent other units from their detachment from benefiting from detachment abilities. So there's no impact there. Uh, and it does not prevent other units from your army from benefiting from abilities that require every model in your army to have that ability. So you can mix them in and it's not going to have any impact. Uh, this game's actually making it easier for it to uh, intermingle them in amongst your force. An agent of the Imperium unit including the patrol, battalion or brigade detachment in this manner is ignored for any rules that state all units in that detachment must have at least one faction keyword in common uh, and when determining your army faction. So, yeah we'll cover Draxus here. Uh, power level 4, HQ choice, movement 6, weapon skill 2 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 3, toughness 3, 5 wounds, Four attacks, leadership nine and three up. So I think I've covered this uh, uh, model before, uh, but uh, just in case I'm gonna go over it again. Uh, it's equipped with the Dire Singer, or the Dirge Singer, however it's pronounced, and a Power Fist. And only one model of this, only one of this model in your army. Um, so uh, the Dire Singer, or Dirge Singer, however it's pronounced, range 18, assault two, strength four, AP 0 and 2 damage, and it's like a shuriken ability here, so any 6 pluses to wound is AP minus 3 for that attack. And the power fist, use your rules for that. Uh, minus 1 to hit rolls, D3 damage, AP minus 3 and times 2 strength. It's fighting at strength 6. So, a, a cheapish HQ, really, not too amazing. Not too bad. Authority of the Inquisition Inquiry Special Rules. Uh, refractive Fields of 5 plus Invon save. Unquestionable Wisdom. Friendly Imperium units in this model's uh, can use this model's leadership characteristic instead of their own. Master of in 6. Leadership of 9. It's a good leadership. And then Shang. When this model manifests the Smite Psychic Power, you can select one enemy unit of an 18 visible to the model to be affected instead of the closest enemy unit. So you can actually pick out targets and that's pretty good. That is good. And then Paralysis grenades. At the start of the fight phase, if this model made a charge move this turn, you can select one enemy unit of an inch of this model. To the end of that phase, that enemy unit cannot be selected to fight till all other eligible units have done so. If that unit has an ability that allows it to fight first in the fight phase, it instead fights as if it did not have this ability. If both players have units that cannot fight until all other units have done so, then alternate choosing which of those units to fight with starting the player's turn. Is taking place. So useful enough. Uh, this model can attempt to manifest one psychic power and attempt to deny one and it knows smite and one other psychic power. It's a shame can't manifest two but just the one. So not too bad an HQ. It's okay. It's all, it's all right. Okay. So then the others, I'm not going to go through them here. It's in Inquisitor Greyfax, Inquisitor Cortez, Inquisitor uh, Karamazov, Inquisitor Eyeshorn, uh, Audio Malleus, Inquisitor and Terminator, Armor, Regular Inquisitor, a Jacaro Weaponsmith, Acolytes, Demon Host, and then you've got the weaponry uh, listed just here. Points values, I'll call these out for you uh, if they have changed or not. So, named characters, Inquisitor Cortez is 90 points, uh, Eyeshorn is 80, Greyfax is 85, uh, Karamazov is 115, and then Draxus is 80. Units Acolytes are 8 points each, Demon Host is 25, Inquisitors are 55, Chikara Weaponsmith is 18, and the Audio Malleus Inquisitor and Terminator Armour is 91 points. Uh, and then... War Gear, I'm just picking out... Uh, bolt Pistol, Bolt Gun, 0, Combi Flamer is 8, Combi Melter is 15, Combi Plasma is 11, Condemner Bolt Gun, is one point, flame is six points, frag grenade zero, hot shot, laser guns four, incinerator is twenty, and inferno pistol is seven. Uh, the ranged weapons, chicara weapons are zero, laser pistol zero, crack grenade zero, melter guns fourteen, a needle pistol is two, plasma guns eleven, plasma pistols five, psy cannon seven, psych out grenades is zero, uh, storm bolt is two, unholy gaze is zero, and then melee weapons, chainsword zero, force axe ten, force stave eight, force sword eight, nemesis demon hammer eighteen, power fist is nine, power mall four, power sword four, 
Thunderhammer 16 and Warp Grasp is zero. Uh, Warlord traits then, Radical, once per battle round you can reroll one hit roll, wound roll, damage roll, save and throw, psychic test or deny the witch test made for this Warlord. Uh, so once per battle round, that's not bad. Uh, Puritan, improve this Warlord's invun save by one to a maximum of three plus, that's very useful. Especially, especially if you want a four plus and make it a three plus, that's really good. Uh, formidable Resolve. Uh, especially the characters now going into Night Edition, they're a bit more vulnerable than they used to be. So any improvement, any way to protect your characters a bit more, and a three plus in one save, it's very very useful. Uh, formidable resolve. Add onto this warlord's leadership characteristic and increase the range of this warlord's unquestionable wisdom ability by six. As uh, then, uh, Ordo Hereticus, no escape. This warlord can perform a heroic intervention as if they were an as if there were enemy units within six inches instead of three, and when you do so, you can move up to six instead of three. When an enemy unit of an inch of this world is chosen to fall back, you can roll one d6, unless any models in that unit have a minimum move characteristic on a four plus, the unit cannot fall back this turn. Uh, Ordo Xenos, Stoic Law, or Esoteric Law, whilst this warlord is on the battlefield, roll one d6 each time you time your opponent uses stratagem on a 5 plus you gain a command point and that's helpful but maybe not as helpful as it used to be but now with night starting to get a lot more command points already so there may not be as much desperate need to harvest command points but it's useful uh, Automalius Psychic Mastery this warlord knows one additional psychic power from the Telephysia Discipline and can attempt to manifest one additional psychic power in your psychic phase and attempt to deny one additional psychic power in your opponents Psychic phase, and that is that's useful as well. Yeah, so some pretty good ones there. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, so named characters and warlord traits here. Uh, Cortez then has psychic mastery. Inquisitor Icehorn has radical. Greyfax has no escape. Uh, Karamazov has formidable resolve, and then Draxus has radical. So, the Telephysia Discipline here, which is an option to take uh, for Inquisitor Psychers. So, uh, before the battle, generate the psychic powers uh, for psycho models that know powers from the Telephysia Discipline using the powers presented here. You can either roll 1d6 on the table below to generate uh, each power randomly, uh, or you can select which powers the psycho knows. If you're selecting powers, you can select from the Ordo specific powers opposite which is those ones depending on what order you're going to select from uh, but only if the psycho belongs to that order so logical enough I'll run through these three specific ones first of all so for order hereticus you can go for and I sort of approach this sort of a tactic kind of approach here which ones I go for here so uh, scourging has a warp charge value of six if manifested select one enemy unit within 12 of this psycho so you need to be quite close to this one so, until the start of your next psychic phase, subtract one from the attacks characteristic of models in that enemy unit to a minimum of one. So, this is kind of useful. Roll 2d6 if the total is equal to or greater than the highest leadership characteristic in that enemy unit. Then until the start of your next psychic phase, resolve an attack made by a model in that enemy unit. Subtract one from the hit rolls. There's, there's two opportunities there. Uh, if it goes off, you're guaranteed minus one attack, and then the potential to get minus one to the hit rolls as well. So, it's quite crippling that one. Actually, not too bad at all. It's quite potent psychic power to go for. But one thing is the range. You need to get quite close. Uh, it's Ordo Xenos, Psychic Veil. Warp charge value of 5. If manifest until the start of your next psychic phase, friendly Ordo Xenos units within 6. Of this psychic can be selected as... Can only be selected as a target of attacks if they're the closest visible enemy unit. It can only be selected as a target of charges if they're within 6 inches of the charging unit. Again, that's pretty powerful, that one. Wow. It really is powerful enough. Easy to manifest. Uh, really good for protecting units. Especially now in 9th edition. Trying to protect some characters and so on. Uh, that's another layer of protection with Psychic Vow. So these Psychic Powers are uh, potent enough. Uh, then Ordo Malleus. Uh, warding Incantation. has a Warp Charge value of 6. If manifested, select one friendly Imperium Infantry or Bike Unit within 12. Until the start of the next Psychic Phase, uh, you get a 5 plus Inbound save. Uh, which is uh, helpful enough. I'd say those two, the first two, are better. 
Uh, telephasia discipline then terrifies the first time warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select one immune within 18, invisible to the psychic until the start of the next psychic phase, subtract one of the leadership characteristic of models in that unit. That unit cannot fire Overwatch. So cannot fire Overwatch, not as potent now in 9th edition where Overwatch can only be done if you have a stratagem. So, but uh, still helpful, still applies. And then minus one leadership's not too significant. That one's all right. Uh, psychic fortitude is warp charge value of four. If manifested, select one friendly Imperium unit within 12. To the start of your next psychic phase, and morale test is taken for that unit. It's an auto pass morale. Hmm. Again, you've got, sort of got to anticipate that you are going to have to take a big morale test. It's not too big of a power, that one. Dominate next. Maybe helpful, perhaps, with hordes and to prevent you from doing an auto pass morale, maybe. Uh, dominate then. Warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select one enemy model within 12 inches of the cycle that's not a vehicle and roll 3d6. If the total is equal to or greater than the enemy model's leadership characteristic, that enemy model can immediately shoot with one weapon as if it were your shooting phase or make one attack as if it were the fight phase. In either case, treat that enemy model as if it were a separate unit. It is part of your army while shooting or making that close combat attack. Shoot with one weapon. Okay. So it's quite likely for it to happen. Value of six and then it's 3d6 trying to uh, beat the leadership characteristic. So the range 12 though is quite tight for range. Okay. Mental interrogation. Uh, there's a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select one enemy character within 12. Again, it's close range here. Uh, uh, 12 off and visible to the psyker. To the start of your next psychic phase, when resolve an attack made by that enemy model, subtract 1 from the hit roll. If your army's battle forge, roll 3d6. If the result is equal to or greater than uh, the model's leadership characteristic, you gain a command point. Now, these aren't that amazing, these ones. The specific ones, I think, are better than the top two here. Uh, psychic pursuit. There's a warp charge value of 7. If manifested, select one enemy character unit. That not only contains models with a wounds characteristic of less than 10 and is within 18 inches of and visible to the psyker, then select on friendly auto infantry unit within 6 of this psyker to start with an next shooting phase. That auto infantry unit can target that character unit, even if it's not the closest enemy unit. And again, not as potent now uh, with 9th edition, that makes it a bit easier to shoot at characters. So, yeah, maybe leave in the comment section what you think of these, but not too amazing. Castigation is the last one. It's so warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select one enemy unit of an 18, invisible to the psyker, roll 3d6. If the total exceeds the lowest leadership characteristic in the enemy unit, uh, it suffers d3 mortal wounds. So that one's alright. So I would say, as the best options perhaps, is, it's not too much of a bother if you can't manifest loads of psychic powers, because there's not that many great ones to choose from anyway. Um, and then the better option is to take psychers that belong to Ordo Hereticus uh, or Ordo Xenos and take those two specific powers. They seem to be the better ones. Okay, so not that amazing. Relics of the Inquisition. So, Blade of the Ordo. Inquisitor model equipped with power sword only. So this is a relic uh, sword then, and it becomes plus one strength, AP minus three, and D3 damage instead of one. Resolve an attack made by this weapon against you that has a specific... Uh, that is specified by the bearer's quarry ability. Yes, yeah, so the two match up. This weapon has a damage characteristic of three. So that is a pretty good relic, actually. Yeah, a real nice weapon, that one. Really good. And with that with that quarry ability, you know, where you're on hit rolls and wound rolls, that's a, a nice upgrade to uh, give to the weapon there. So, nice. So you've got digital weapons, which is um, it's making a hit roll. If you get a hit, it's a mortal wound, same as space brains and so on. Uh, Black Shroud, Inquisitor model only when resolving an attack made against a model with this relic. Subtract one from the wound roll. So minus one to the wound roll, which you can easily forget during the middle of a game. It's Blade of the Order, I think it's my favourite at the moment. Ignis, Judicium, Order Hereticus. Right, so starting to get some specific ones now. Uh, so for Hereticus, Inquisitor model, uh, equipped with an Inferno pistol. You replace it with range 12, so much better range. Pistol 1, strength 8 minus 1, d6 damage. 
Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon against a unit within half range, or that has the chaos or psychic keyword, roll 2d6 for inflicted damage and discard the lowest result. So it's a better pistol. Uh, universal Anathema, which is uh, Auto Xenos Inquisitor. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by this, this by a model of this relic against a unit that is not a vehicle or Titanic. Uh, a wound roll of 2 plus is always successful. So yeah, it's alright. I still like the Blade of Auto here. And then Tainted Blade for Auto Malleus Inquisitor. Uh, replaces the Power Sword with plus 3 strength, AP minus 3, and 1 damage. In the fight phase, when the bearer is chosen to fight for the first time that phase, roll 1d6. On a 1, the bearer suffers a mortal wound. This weapon cannot be used that phase. Resolve an attack made by this weapon. If the saving throw is fouled, you can make an additional attack against the same unit using this weapon. This, this additional attack cannot generate another attack. So a bit of a bonus there, and a bit of a danger that you can cause yourself harm as well. But still, I think um, the Blade of the Ordo is a better option. So they're not too bad, some relics are pretty good. Uh, so some stratagems now, you get six of them here. So this is quite rare. Four command points for execution bombardment. It's better be good. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase. If an Inquisitor model from your army is on the battlefield, select one point in the battlefield and roll 1d6. For each unit within 2d6 of that point, so between 2 inches and 12 inches, you're averaging about 6 inch. Uh, from that point, so you know, a six inch. If you're all six, it's actually going to be twelve. So it's a pretty, pretty good size area. And maxed out, it could be range twenty-four. <laughs> okay, subtracting one from the result of the unit being rolled for as a character. On a four-plus unit being rolled for, suffers D three mortal wounds. You're going to use a strategy once per battle. That could, has the potential to be pretty big. Uh, you could roll 2d6 and have a command re-roll, not sure on ninth whether you can re-roll a single dice or whether with a command re-roll you have to re-roll both the dice, I'm not sure on the mechanics of that. That would mean spending an extra command point, so looking at 5 command points if you're going to try and go for a re-roll with that. Um, to try and max out your range, you know, to get as close to maximum amount of range as possible, but probably be worth it. But uh, densely packed multiple enemy units, that's a, a big bombardment that one. Uh, strategic excruciation for one command point. Use a strategy in any phase after an enemy character unit is destroyed within three inches of an, any Inquisition units from your army. Gain D3 command points to subtract one from leadership characteristic of enemy units until the end of the battle. You can only use a strategy once per battle. Okay, so yeah, it's okay, it's alright. Uh, to the exclusion of all else. One command point, use a stratagem in the shooting phase, the fight phase, the opponent's charge phase. When an Imperium Infantry or Imperium Bike unit from your army is within six inches, a friendly Inquisitor unit fires Overwatch, where he's chosen to shoot or fight with. At the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by model in that unit against an enemy unit specified in that Inquisitor unit's quarry ability. Reroll, hit roll of one. Okay, and then. Uh, the Arbiter of the Emperor's Will, one command point, use a strategy before the battle. Select one Inquisitor model from your army that is not your Warlord and determine one Warlord trait for it. It is regarded as your Warlord... Okay, so it's an extra Warlord trait. Uh, same, similar to other uh, more recent codexes. And then Alpha Class Psyker. Uh, use a strategy before the battle. Select one Psyker Inquisitor model from your army that is not a named character. This model knows an additional Psychic Power from the Telephysia Discipline and can attempt to deny one additional Psychic Power in your opponent's Psychic Phase. And you can use a strategy once per battle. Yeah, that's great. One command point to those upgrades, I think. Brilliant. And then clandestine operation. One command point. Use a strategy during deployment. Select one infantry inquisitor unit and up to one acolyte. Up to one demon host and up to one Jacaro unit. These units can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches away from enemy deployment zones. But all models must be set up in this way, must be within six inches of all the selected Inquisitor units, or of the selected Inquisitor unit. You can only use a strategy once for battle, so the ability to uh, deploy a whole load of units, really, all around this Inquisitor unit. That's pretty good, that one. Quite fluffy and narrative as well. So Inquisitor name generator. And then on to heroes and villains so hmm Ephrael Stern and Kaiganil of the Bloody Tears 
So I think it's these two models here. Okay, we'll review these um, and then we'll take a look at a Luminor Xerus as well. Fantastic model. Necrons are really getting some treatment here by Games Workshop. So amazing. I really, really love my Necron models, the new ones uh, from uh, the Indomitus Crusade box. This model here. Uh, Illuminor Xerus looks fantastic as well, so it's great to see Necrons getting some incredible models. Really, really good work from Games Workshop, for sure. Um, but so we'll cover this one here, Ephrael, or Ephrael Stern, and Kaiganil of the Bloody Tears. So, power level 6 HQ choice, Ephrael Stern, movement 7, weapon skill 2+, plus. Blistic skill 3+, plus. strength 4, toughness 4, 6 wounds, loads of wounds. Uh, four attacks, leadership nine, three up save, and then Kaiganil is movement eight, two up weapon skill, three plus ballistic skill, strength eight, oh sorry, <laughs> strength three, toughness three, five wounds, four attacks, leadership nine, and six up save. So uh, it contains those two characters. Stern is equipped with a bolt pistol, uh, Sanctity, frag and crack grenades, and then Kaiganil is equipped with Harlequin's kiss, outclass. Outcasts, Blades, Plasma Grenades, and only one of this unit per army. The characters. Character. Both models characters, yeah. So, Harlequin's Kiss then. For Harlequin's is uh, plus one strength, AP minus one, D3 damage, melee weapon. Uh, the Outcasts, Blades, strength use, AP minus one, one damage, make two hit rolls for each attack. So, you're going to get eight attacks here uh, if you're attacking before, before attacks. Sanctity is a melee weapon, plus one strength, eight minus three and two damage, that's a really good weapon. Yeah, great weapon. Um, frag, crack and plasma grenades. Right, so abilities then. Cast together by fate. During deployment, both models in this unit must be set up at the same time. So they do not need to be set up in unit coherency. From that point onwards, each model is treated as a separate unit. Okay. Unexpected allies. This unit can be included in any Imperium detachment without taking up a slot. As long as every unit in your army, with the exception of those that are unaligned, has the Imperium keyword. It does not have the Fallen keyword. This unit does not prevent other units from your army from benefiting from detachment abilities. It's going to have like, no impact on the structure of your army. You can just uh, slot them in. So I don't really need to go for all of that. And then Wanderers. Uh, neither F Ephrael, Stern, nor Kaiganil can be a Warlord. In addition, during deployment, you can set these models up on the webway instead of setting them up on the battlefield. If you do, at the end of any movement phases, you can deep strike in um, with three inches of each other and nine inches from enemy models. And then some separate abilities for each of these characters. Ephrael Stern has Demon... Demonifuge. Of, yeah. Demonifuge, I think it's pronounced. At the start of your shooting phase, roll 2d6. Adding 2 to the result if there are any Chaos units within 18. On a 5 plus, the nearest enemy unit within 18, invisible to Ephrael Stern, suffers D3 mortal wounds. If it's 9 or more, it's D6 mortal wounds. Great. Brilliant. Yeah, excellent ability. Nice range in it as well. Then Divine Protection. 4 plus invuln save. In addition, resolve an attack against this model. It's minus 1 to the hit rolls. So, yeah, some pretty good powers uh, stacking up here for uh, Ephrael Stern. And then Kaiganil has Knight of Shadows, 4 plus invon save as well. In addition, this model can fight first in the fight phase, even if it didn't make a charge move this turn. If your opponent has units that did make a charge move, then you alternate. And then Mysterious Saviour, whilst this model is in 3 inches of a friendly Ephrael Stern model, roll 1d6 each time that model would lose a wound, and a 5 plus the wound is not lost. Great, so they do work better together. That's a pretty good benefit, 5 plus feel no pain. So all in all, they're pretty good characters actually. And the points is uh, 115 points for both. So I think for both of them, what you're getting is uh, pretty cheap and good stat line. Harlequin's Kiss is, is D3 damage. Sanctity is two wounds at a time. Maybe minus three. Yeah, good close combat weaponry. Ability to cause some mortal wounds. Tons of attacks in close combat. And you know if you combine their stat lines together, there's 11 wounds to try and get through and eight attacks. Yeah, not bad. So, yeah, pretty good, actually. I think their uh, rules are pretty good. And then Illuminor Xerus. So I'd, I'd love to put this model in my Necron Army. It's fantastic. It's beautifully pr produced and sculpted. I mean, what a change from the original model. 
It really is good. And Glad Games Workshop haven't pushed ahead constant new characters all the time, but they've revisited some of the uh, classic characters, gone for re-sculpt, and uh, every time they've done it, I think they've done a fantastic job. You know, of all the big re-sculpts they've done, I, I don't know of any really that have been bad. They're all they've all been good. Uh, Illuminar Zero Stands, an HQ choice, uh, power level 7. 130 points for this model. So, expecting something pretty good for that cost. Bearing in mind, 115 points for the previous two Imperial models. Uh, movement 8, so nice and quick. Weapon skill and ballistic skill 3+. plus. Strength 6 and toughness 6. So it's pretty tough, you know, for a non-monster as such, non-vehicle uh, model. Uh, toughness 6 is great. 7 wounds, plenty of wounds. 4 attacks, which is pretty good for Necrons. And then leadership 10, 3 up save. So equipped with an Eldritch Lance, Impaling Legs. So the Eldritch Lance is melee and shooting. For shooting, it's range 18, Assault D3, Strength 8 minus 4 and D6 damage. So a little bit random. Yeah. So you may only end up with just one shot. And the downside here is you, your Ballistic Skill is only 3 plus. So despite, you know, this named character, they've kept the weapon skill and ballistic skill at 3 plus. So there's going to be turns where you just you don't hit at all for shooting. It's not too reliable with that. Hmm. And then close combat, the Eldritch Lance is plus 1 strength, fight at strength 7, 8 minus 3, and 2 damage. And again, it's 4 attacks, but hitting on 3s. It's not too impressive. So, uh, Living Metal, you automatically restore a wound at the start of your turn. I guess that's now in the, what's called the command phase now for Ninth Edition. Uh, Masto Technomancer, add one to rolls made for the reanimation protocol's ability for friendly Necron units within three inches of this model. So that's very useful. I'm just thinking, you know, could this model replace my Cryptek? My Cryptek already grants that. A unit cannot benefit from both the uh, Master Technomancer and the Technomancer ability in the same turn. It's in three inches. Plus one, yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking, yeah, this model goes in the middle of my gun line. Cryptek. Uh, my current Cryptek, uh, I think it's the Chronometron. Grants models nearby 5 plus invon save. That's proved very useful, but I don't think this model can do that. So it's going to be a tough choice here, and you're paying more points. We'll see if the benefits need to outweigh. A lot more durable though, obviously. Seven wounds as opposed to my Cryptex four. Three up save, toughness six, so much more durability. Um, five powers better than a Cryptek. My, the other thing my Cryptek I usually make it the Warlord, and it's granting auto pass morale, which is another big thing as well. Uh, so anyway, automatic energy manipulator. If this model destroys one or more enemy units in the fight phase, so you'll destroy entire units. It's not too easy. Then at the end of that phase, it can use its mechanical augmentation abilities if it were the end of your movement phase. You get to use this bonus thing again. This is encouraging to get stuck in a bit. Uh, but it has to be in the fight phase. And you've got to... It's enemy units, not models. So you're not quite limited. So you sort of need this one to finish off an enemy unit and to kill off the last couple of models. And then you get to use that again. So, Empiric Overcharger, when a Psychic Test is taken for an enemy Psychic unit the 9, that enemy suffers perils on any double, not just double 1, double 6. That's okay, and he's easily forget that one, and it's very close range. So, not like, great. And the final one <coughs> is uh, Mechanical Augmentation. At the end of the movement phase, you can select one Necron Warriors or Immortals units. I run both, so I run a unit of Immortals and, and usually two units of Warriors. You can select one uh, within six, so yeah, it's fine. It'd be in the middle of the gun line. Uh, that has not already been affected by the ability of this battle. So it's not stackable. If you do so, uh, roll a d3 and consult the tail below. So it's the chance to, just once during a game, affect those units. Say I've got three units each turn. Um, they get control on this table uh, just here. But then once the unit's been affected, there's no further bonus. Yeah, it's, so it's non-stackable here. So if you're all a 1, uh, on a D3, it's plus 1 to the strength characteristics, which usually isn't that helpful because your gun line is usually just you know, firepower. Uh, plus 1 to the toughness characteristic if you're all a 2, which um, that's useful enough, making them a bit tougher. Toughness 5 Immortals, Toughness 5 Necron Warriors, 
pretty good. And improve the ballistic skill characteristic of models in that unit by one uh, at the end of the battle. So ballistic skill three plus becomes two plus, and that's useful enough. So it's okay. Luminous Eros is okay. Not utterly incredible. I'm glad Games Workshop have been sensible with these brand new models, not made them utterly ridiculous in order just to sell loads of them, but they've made them viable options, but not buy at all costs. So, but fantastic model. I mean, incredibly good model. Wow. Really, really nice. And uh, what seems to be a common thing now for Games Workshop is putting uh, detail on the basis of these new models, which is excellent. It's well worth them doing that. It really means they can pose the model differently. It adds drama to the pose and to the model and to the base. It's fantastic work. Yeah, really, really good. 10 out of 10 for the model. The rules are okay. Uh, Theatres of War. So they give you some extra battlefields to play on, the Webway, a war-torn shrine world. I guess these extra rules won't interfere with the new rules for terrain. For ninth, Devoured Worlds, a sort of Tyranid style, Demon World, Hive World, that's good fun playing on these, Forge World, some extra rules, Perilous Jungle, Derelict World, Necron Tomb World, actually got some rules for Necron Tomb World, very cool. There's some stratagems for it as well. And that is the end of that, and then a little bit of storyline at the back. So, strange one this one, there's not too much packed in here, just some stuff for Inquisition, a couple of new models and their rules, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then obviously missions, the storyline continues, but uh, not as full up as uh, other Psychic Awakening books but it's times of change really it's the switch from eighth to ninth edition and so on uh, but uh, that's the review leave your own comments and feedback uh, about the rules and uh, what you think of the different stratagems and model traits and so on uh, are inquisition options viable or not and then bearing in mind it's all switching over to ninth edition uh, check out gamingfigures.com uh, a few supplies of 40k and other gaming systems at a discounted rate. Uh, check out the other uh, review videos on the channel uh, and keep a lookout for more videos on the way. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.